Hey, hey, Blue Table fans, kablam! Today we're gonna to be looking at this giant Kador army. Oh my gosh, this just rolled off the lines here at BTP, and uh, I just couldn't be prouder. Uh, I, I probably won't even be able to talk about this uh, the entire time, so I'm just gonna let you soak it all in. Got an epic, epic butcher here, epic, epic butcher. Um, yeah, I get ahead of myself. Yeah, you like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's got these two armored Argus, which look like really cool. Now, this client wanted um, like a Russian green, like a military green on his guys. And got some Kayazi assassins here. And I think this worked out really, really, really well. So whenever you try and do red and green, you got to be careful. On the first count, you need to be careful be, uh, that you don't make it like half red and half green because then you get like this Christmas effect. And then along with that, for the second thing, you have to watch the shade of red and the shade of green. So if you have like bright cranberry red, half and half with a straight up uh, holly green, well, guess what? You're having a holly jolly army. So you want to avoid that. But in this case, you have a very, very dark military green with just these bright red highlights. And quite frankly, I think it works very nicely. So when you're painting your army, you've got to, you've got to consider how's the army gonna look as a whole and uh, how is it going to look individually? So sometimes people get the individual models right, but it starts looking just a little bit weird once you start looking at uh, once you start, once you look at it as a, as a whole force on the tabletop like this. So another interesting thing here is there's this light sort of dead grass on here. And I think that's a very good choice for this army because, um, it tends to make this very dark paint job stand out. Uh, you gotta be careful with that, of course. Uh, but in this case, I think it was the right choice. Uh, if you had used green static grass with brown grass, that might not have looked bad, but it could have really conflicted with all of the green because the green is a predominant color in here. All right, so now the dessert. This is a gun carriage, an absolutely ridiculously fantastic figure that makes me happy inside, and a conquest. In fact, let's just move this bad boy, this bad boy out. Also, at BTP, we put on multiple layers of matte coat on our armies. So that means they are very well protected against the rigors of wargaming, including being handled by uh, your hands, which have uh, skin oils that can wear off the paint over time. But uh, I don't think that really happens when you get, um, uh, when you get some good uh, protection on there. So don't, don't forget protection, guys. All right, so uh, here we go. So this guy's been all banged up, some real battle damage, and I do believe some faux battle damage as well. Uh, and it's been, it's been highlighted up as this really super cool um, decorative base here, fallen Saignar and Banner, just crunching this, uh, this wagon wheel right into the dust. And he looks a little bit like he's running. So that's cool, just charging, blam, right on through right on through this wall. And I like how this cork has been used as kind of this uh, stucco stuff. And uh, that produces a really nice effect. And we have trophies from various armies here, from Krikes, Kriks, I guess is how you say that, Scorn and Legion. And uh, wow, you just, you just can't beat a really, 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 really nice centerpiece model. Well, on that note, I will leave you. Maybe we'll just take a quick shot at these uh, shock troopers back here and uh, yeah we'll just uh, leave you on the uh, on the conquest thanks for tuning in and I hope that you got your inspiration for the day